Hey guys, how you doing? It's Henry at Mowers and Blowers. Good afternoon. From a previous episode, you saw that I got my uh, <laughs> low compression engine actually started up. We tried everything, everything in the book to figure out why this quantum engine won't start. I finally just sprayed seafoam spray into the combustion chamber, a ton of it, like a third of a can, right? And we let it soak for a couple of days. And then as you saw, <laughs> it started on the first pull. I mean, there was smoke pouring out of the uh, muffler, but that's the seafoam burning up, you know what I mean? Anyway, uh, a lot of you guys said, wow, that's amazing because the seafoam probably soaked and soaked, got rid of some carbon buildup in that area, uh, maybe allowed the intake or exhaust valves or both to seat better, thus making more compression. In addition, soaking the rings, the piston area, the walls, right? May have loosened up some stuff, perhaps a compressed ring that was in the piston. Maybe it soaked it so much that it popped up and built some more compression, and that's why it started. Let's see if it starts today. It's been about uh, two days after I made that video. So, cold start. It's an auto choke, so it should, should just start. I know this is on the bottom, but I didn't have a, a bail handle for the top. Obviously, you can see it's still smoking because it's got some seafoam still in it. Uh, a lot of the subscribers asked me, hey, Henry, why don't you do another compression test now? Because as you know, we tried doing a compression test on this thing prior to all the troubleshooting, right? And when we kind of figured out it was probably the compression issue, it had about 45 PSI in compression. So now I'm going to put the compression tester on it after the seafoam, and we're going to see if there's a difference. I really doubt it, though, because that uh, compression tester I have, it's junk. It's like 11 bucks. I think whatever you do, it's still going to say 45 or 50. You know what I mean? But we'll see. Uh, first, I want to tell you, that I'm dropping a new sticker today. That's right, you guys may have saw an announcement that my new stickers were out yesterday, but these are the holographic ones. Remember I told you I bought the regular ones, 10 that uh, I wanted to uh, try out, and those sold out in like an hour. Um, I had only 10, but it sold out super quick. Anyway, so I bought, uh, I had a special, so I bought 50 of them. Look at that. It's my stainless steel um, design, right? The background is the uh, diamond plate with a uh, stainless steel play button. It's got my mowers and blowers in the um, American flag background, which is really cool. It's the first time I've ever done that. And I've got my social media on the bottom there, you know, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Man, that looks sharp, doesn't it? Anyway, that's available. I got 50 of them. It's on my eBay. You guys can check the link in my description to my eBay store or individual links to my uh, mowers and blower stickers. Remember, I still have about four other versions of it. And my original one, uh, I only have like four or five left. So if you guys want one of those. And also, I only have two bumper stickers left. And uh, when they're gone, I'm not ordering anymore because I want to concentrate on newer designs moving forward. But this is my latest design. I think it looks pretty cool, especially the holographic. I think I'm just going to do the holographic from now on because... I know it's really eye-catching. If you guys collect mowers and blower stickers, as I do, um, make sure you get one of these um, holographic stickers. Or if you're missing the other ones, feel free to buy those too. Uh, remember, I don't have any merch. This is my only merch, so if you're a fan of mowers and blowers, you're gonna help contribute to the channel. Uh, keeps me going every day with videos every day. But moving forward, I'm gonna try to take the weekends off because I'm kind of burning out a little bit, you know? I don't know anybody else who, except for Pug One maybe in Canada who does a video every day, but you know, it's a lot of work. I put a lot of work into the videos as you guys know, uh, but I'm going to try to take the weekends off. So you'll probably see videos Monday through Friday, but uh, try to take the weekends off, you know. But you know I'm not going to take the weekend off. I'm just going to do a little bit here, a little bit there, and make one video for like a Monday or a Tuesday or something, you know. But uh, help me out, fellas. Um, buy a sticker. Also, if you guys would like to um, donate to the channel here and there, paypal.me slash mowers and blowers. Every dollar counts towards helping me out on videos every day. Keeps the content coming uh, moving forward. Thanks a lot. 
Now let's put that compression tester on that uh, Toro. As you guys know from this, it wasn't the spark plug. This was the second one. It wasn't the carburetor. It wasn't the intake manifold. It wasn't the head gasket. Somebody told me to take the muffler off and try it. Obviously, I didn't do it, but it's not that, right? <laughs> uh, it's not the sheared key and the crankshaft. It's not the magnet that fell off the flywheel. I uh, love all the uh, comments, though, honestly. All right, so look. Got the compression tester on. This was the last reading of it. It was uh, just, a, just a little bit before 50, so I'm going to reset to zero. I don't know if that'll stick, fellas, but if you can see it, great. If not, I'll just tell you. All right, so here we go. I'm going to try it and see what the, if the compression's better than 50. Hey, that's like five or six pulls. Uh, there you go. Exactly the same. Just a smidgen below 50. So while the compression obviously is better because we did the seafoam thing, it uh, obviously this gauge is not accurate enough to, to, to gauge what it really is, you know? But either way, um, it starts and runs on the first pull every time. So that's very cool. Not like I'm going to sell this piece of junk anyway, you know what I mean? But it's good to know that this engine is available for future uh, deck maybe, or, you know, if I can maybe clean up this deck or something like that. But the uh, blade needs to be replaced because it's kind of wobbly. Did I need to say the deck was wobbly? I meant the blade. The blade may need to be changed because it's kind of a little wobbly. Also, as you guys saw when this was running, I didn't even screw down these bolts. That's why it's kind of more wobbly. Anyway, so uh, today I'm going to uh, be working on this beast. This beast I got from uh, that day that I was selling two snowblowers. Well, I only sold one, the uh, Toro 826, right? And then the second one, the guy thought it was too small. In the pictures, they look bigger, you know what I mean? But when he saw it, he thought it was too small and that's not what he wanted. And so uh, he didn't buy it. But on the way home from his, uh, from meeting that guy, I looked down the alley and that's when I picked this up. <laughs> this thing's, if it, this thing's running well and all that, that's a $500 bill, no problem. You know, this thing's a beast. It's huge. It's in really good shape. It's not rust anywhere, right? And actually, I think I, I looked at the label and this is, uh, obviously it's a Troy built, right? By MTD, but uh, originally this is a, a garden way, which was before MTD bought them, right? And turned it into a Troy built but it's from uh, Gardenway products, right? And believe it or not, this thing's from 1992. It's uh, 29, almost 30 years old, and it doesn't look it. It's in excellent condition, you know what I mean? This thing's a beast. That's a wood chipper thing here. This actually uh, goes down, too. Yeah, it goes down. You lift that up, and this retracts like this so that you can block the uh, thing, you know? And then when you want to shove branches in there, this thing goes up like that. It sticks there, you know? Not cool, that's cool. Uh, anyway, we shot fluid into the uh, carburetor directly and it fired up. So maybe the carburetor's dirty but i don't think it'll take much to get the engine going because we know it runs uh my issue with this is the two cables the bail handle cable to get the propulsion moving forward and reverse right and the transmission selector cable is busted so let's go over here i want to show you exactly what i mean so <clears throat> the bail handle here engages this wire to pull in the mechanism over there that allows it to go either forward or backwards depending on where the transmission gear is selected. Stop, slow, fast, that's not it. <laughs> this one right here. Reverse, neutral, and three gears forward. As you can see, nothing is attached to this lever because this cable is broken. 
Now this cable is not seized. I could use uh, pliers and grip this and push it forward and backwards, which is the reason why this now rolls forward and backwards now, free rolling, because I think I got it in neutral. If I pulled on this to reverse, it'll lock into reverse gear, but I wasn't able to push it forward three gears because this is already too short. You following what I'm saying? So I need to replace this cable and this is a heavy duty cable, you know, and I checked online, seems like $30 or $32. So it's very expensive, this cable, which I'm not going to buy. If I have to move this um, lever lower to get more slack on this wire, I'm gonna cut this part here so it stops around there. And then I'll have this amount of wire sticking out, which is plenty to push down. All I need it to do is move the transmission shifter level to be able to go reverse, neutral, first, second, third. That's what I wanna do, but I don't know, this end over here bothers me, right? Uh, also, this this uh, bail cable handle that engages the transmission is seized. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna remove this cable and try to remove all the cables from down there, at least this one. And I'm gonna try to soak it with some fluid and see if I can free it up to save this cable. Cause this cable is also expensive, like $20. So if I'm, I'm not gonna spend $50 on cables, you know? But I think my friend Bill Martini has the same exact thing and I don't think he's gonna fix it. Uh, I think he's just gonna take the engine off and do something with it. If he has the two cables for this man, that would be awesome. As you can see, this is the gear shifting cable, right? It's very thick, very heavy duty. That's reverse. See, it's locked, all right? I'll push it forward one notch. Jesus. It doesn't help it's cold too. All right, well now it's stuck. So look, I'm not gonna mess with this right now because I got it back into uh, neutral, so now it rolls. Um, I don't wanna get it stuck again so that it won't roll. It's a pain in the butt to move this thing. It's like a 200 pounds or something, you know? And this cable is so strong that I can't even cut it over here. I mean, it's really strong. I have a lot of throttle cables, but not this long, you know? I'm gonna have to see what I'm gonna do about this. I just hope Bill Martini doesn't need his cable unless his cable is bad too, you know? but I'm not gonna mess with the drive cable yet. I'm just gonna leave it as it is uh, right now. I'm gonna remove the bail handle cable though. The bail handle engages the transmission so that it, uh, once you have it in gear, you can, it'll propel forward or backwards. So I'm gonna remove the uh, cable from the handle. I'm gonna tilt this machine to the side so I can get access to disconnecting this cable from the lever down on the gearbox and let's see if I can loosen it up because right now it's seized it won't move as you can see over here this cable is attached to one of these uh tabs you know what I mean you, you, you bang it on and from pressure it sticks there so when you remove this it may not go back on again you know so that that's an issue but uh I'm gonna tilt this to the left after I remove this that bail cable is attached to this area here. So I'll loosen this. Yeah, I'm gonna loosen the bottom one too. Pull it upwards. There we go. I'm gonna loosen it from the bottom. Ooh. Here's the lever right there. I'm gonna show you the lever. That's it. It's the cable I just loosened, right? And there we go. So this is what engages it, right here. See, you pull on it, 
and that tightens the belt to get the propulsion going. And then the other lever for the, it's right there. You see that? That one right there. That's to engage the transmission right there. So here's the bail handle cable that's seized. So usually it's like just seized right around here. If I just like keep bending each segment of this thing, maybe it'll kind of loosen up the rust maybe. I might just like twirl this into like a round circle, you know, bind it up, stick it into a, uh, like a dish or something or a tray, fill it with like penetrating oil. Let it soak for a bit, it might be able to loosen this up, readjust that, and if it moves freely, this will work as the bail handle thing. Because it's, uh, I could just use a regular lawnmower bail handle thing, but obviously the Z bend is not a loop. The other end of it is the uh, stud with the screw kind of thing attached to a, I mean, I guess a lawnmower drive cable has the spring with a hook on it you know but the fabrication would be a pain you know i'd rather just try to loosen this up first i sprayed some penetrating oil from my friends over at lucas oil products into this hole into that hole swirled it around trying to unbend this right check out what happened if you step on it and make this thing straight right Look at this. It moves. Awesome. I think I freed it up. So I'm just going to spray some more. To lubricate the wire. And then I'm going to come over on this side, step on it again, and pull it from this side. Now, this part to here is lubricated, right? <clears throat> As you can see, this part was <coughs> on the inside. And as you can see the discoloration, right? You see regular wire gray color. It's a little bit of a kink here, which you want to try to straighten out because that contributes to it not being smooth. And then you could see that it started to, it's, it's rust here, right? See that, how it's black or brown? rust color. So I'm just going to spray some more penetrating oil in the hole. And I'm going to coat this wire. And then go on this side and pull the wire through. Oh, it's already much smoother. I'm going to keep doing this for a while, back and forth.
Okay. Looks like we loosened up the uh, mail handle thing. And it does pull and engage that uh, lever. Make it a little bit tighter. And then that's one down. As you can see here, engaging the bail handle, it moves about a half an inch up and it retracts a half an inch. That's the movement you need to tighten that lever that moves the pulley that tightens the belt to engage the uh, propulsion. So we loosened up this bail handle cable. So that's one cable that's fixed. And now we have to address this. But before we do that, I'm gonna see if Bill Martini has that cable. If he's not using it and he's trashing the whole thing and just keeping the engine, he's not gonna need this uh, cable. If he has one that works, I'm gonna get it from him instead of me trying to fabricate something to get it to work. And it doesn't look like I'll be able to because I don't have a throttle cable that's long enough and thick enough like this. This is heavy duty, really, really strong gauge steel on this wire here. You know, the throttle cables I have are just for like choke cables for a lawn tractor. Nothing, nothing this heavy duty, you know, so that's not going to work. It's not strong enough to engage the transmission. So I'm going to wait until Bill has that cable or gets back to me about it. In the meantime, since we shot some uh, starting fluid through the carburetor and it started, let's put some gas in the gas tank just to see if it'll run on its own. Bone dry. It's good, I think. Because if it was full, full of gas, it wouldn't be good. Let's hope this thing doesn't leak because Tecumseh carburetors are known to leak a lot. All right, I don't see any leaks so far. That's run, that's choke. Let's give it a couple pulls and see. See if gas is getting to the carb. It's on run. And the throttle. The throttle's fast. Let's help it out. Go for stop. Open the choke. Close the choke. Now let's try. I think 
<laughs> Holy cow, is that freaking awesome or what, huh? That is awesome. Oh man, boy oh boy oh boy. That's great, isn't it? I mean, <laughs> just put gas in it, you know? It runs great. Uh, I'm stoked, man. Today we got the uh, bail handle transmission engagement cable freed up from the rust, right? Uh, <clears throat> put everything back again, and I mean, I'm pretty sure it's working and it's fixed, but uh, we need to get that uh, transmission shifter cable replaced. That seems like it's the only thing wrong with it. Very stoked that we don't have to do a carb clean on this because, I mean, maybe a quick and dirty, but starts up and runs just fine. Well, actually, we had to help it to get started, didn't we? Let's try to start it now. On. Some throttle. Because we had to use primer to help it start before. Let's see now. Uh-huh. Let's go back to choke. last started before just need a little help that's all awesome anyway i'm gonna find out if i can get a cable from my friend bill martini bill if you're watching this and i know you are darling <laughs> let me know if you got that cable i could have huh then we can put this one to bed until then we'll see you guys all next time on mowers and blowers Hey, if you guys enjoyed the video, remember to give me a like. Also, comment below. Subscribe. Remember, it doesn't cost anything to subscribe. It's free, right? Also, hit that little bell. That way you'll get post notifications whenever there's a new video and you won't miss out on any of them. Remember to follow my Instagram and Facebook, as well as if you'd like to donate a dollar or two, paypal.me slash mowers and blowers really appreciate all the support also to keep the videos coming every day support the channel bye